Canada has managed a truly incredible result away in Bordeaux in France against one of the best national teams in world football where they managed a nil-nil result against the French national team and this wasn't a bog standard nil-nil result with Canada having their backs to the wall defending the French national side for 90 minutes. No, this was a match that was very exciting back and forth. Canada created some incredible chances themselves but this was a game where Canada had a nil-nil result that saw them go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best national teams in world football. And it was an incredible performance for Jesse Marsh's second match as the Canadian men's national team. And this was a great performance, with Canada having many players who truly put a name on themselves and a name for themselves in the world of football against one of the best national sides, which didn't even throw out a B team. This was a B team by some people's standards for French, but arguably their best side barring the likes of Aureli and Chouamene and Kylian Mbappe. And that was partially due to injury, but we did get to see Kylian Mbappe come on later in the game, and we saw some brilliant performances from multiple Canadian players defending Kylian Mbappe towards the end of that match, more so Maxime Crepeau, which we will be talking about. But this match was extremely exciting from a Canadian perspective, as Canada managed to defend it very well, but going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best national teams. And not a side that decided to go, this is Canada, we got the Euros, coming up we are one of the favorites in French who are going into this Euro 2024 as one of the best national sides one of the favorites to win it they didn't decide no we're gonna arrest some of our team we're gonna arrest some of our best players they went out there deploying arguably their best team right now Mike Magnon, the likes of William Saliba, Deo Upmakano, Randall Colomowani, Usman Dembele, Antoine Griezmann. The list goes on. This French national side is filtered with absolute talent. Some people may say it was the B team, but this was clearly their best French national team, barring Aurelien and Chouameni and Kylian Mbappe. This was a brilliant side. And the fact that Canada managed to go toe to toe with them, playing some brilliant football, not just sitting back, soaking up pressure, and trying to hit them with a counterattack, this was a Canadian side that managed managed to have 51% possession more than the French side at points in this game. This was a Canadian side that managed to finish this match 50-50% possession with one of the best national sides in the world. And I'm truly in shock that I am saying this right now. I expected Canada to lose but put up a good fight. This was an incredible performance for Jesse Marsh's second match as a Canadian men's national team manager. And he showed himself very well and you could see tactically what he was doing you could see those very narrow setup you could see it very early on and it was a shaky not as good first 15 minutes as we saw against the Dutch this was a first 15 minutes where Canada didn't play their best football but they as I like to say in football as a lot of commentators will like to say in football the back line of Canada bended but they did not break they defended very well they did have a couple chances they gave up, but we had an extremely good goalkeeper, Maxime Crepeau, who made some phenomenal saves. And that is what we need a goalkeeper to do, be able to make those massive saves when he's called upon. And Maxime Crepeau played phenomenally today. And we're going to get into that, guys. But before we get into the true review where I give my general thoughts, and there's some players that truly deserve praise from this match, which I'll give them their props. Make sure to drop down below in the comments and let me know your guys' thoughts on this game. How do you guys think Canada did? Is it as impressive as a draw as some people are making out to be, as myself will be making out to be? And who was the true shining lights in this game? But make sure to drop a comment, like, and make sure to hit that sub button, guys, because the appreciation and support in this channel has been incredible, and I really appreciate it all. But we're going to jump straight into it, guys, because this match was phenomenal. Yes, there wasn't any goals. Like I said, the chances for Canada were still there. You saw Liam Millar hit the crossbar. It was a brilliant shot. It reminded me of Alfonso Davies scoring in the Champions League, cutting in, trying to bend it into the far post with his right foot. And it was a great shot from Liam Millar. It looked fantastic. There was no chance of Mike Magnon saving it, but it was a brilliant shot from Liam Millar. And that is where I really want to talk about Liam Millar's game. I've been in praise of Liam Millar for some time, whether it's been at Preston North End, whether it was at FC Basel, whether it's been for Canada. Liam Millar is a fantastic player and doesn't get his props for the Canadian national team. I don't know what some supporters have against him, but he was absolutely sensational today, and he has to be starting for the Canadian national team going forward. Some people wanted Jacob Schaffelberg starting at left mid with Alfonso Davies at left back. Some people didn't even want Alfonso Davies at left back because of his attacking 
knows on how much he likes to go forward. But with Liam Millar playing left mid or left cam and a number 10 who plays an inverted role for a certain extent of this Jesse Marsh setup in a 4 triple 2 Liam Millar is the perfect man to sit just above Alfonso Davies. Alfonso Davies is great in that match today. He was sensational, which I will get onto in a few minutes. But Alfonso Davies having Liam Millar ahead of him gives him the ability to bomb on because Liam Millar is so good at being able to read the match, be able to understand where he has to be positionally to fill in a hole for Alfonso Davies and cover him defensively, while also being able to read the play of the midfielders of France and cover a run, cover a runner making that darting run behind Alfonso Davies, cover that spot for Davies to make sure that someone is covering it at left back. And Liam Millar did that fantastically. Whether it was making, waiting for that overlap with Alfonso Davies, whether it was holding onto the ball smartly just to contain possession and find another midfielder, Liam Millar was extremely smart with the ball. He was smart out of possession. And that is exactly what we've been calling out for in that left midfield spot or left number 10 role in this Jesse Marsh setup just ahead of Alfonso Davies and this is the perfect spot for Canada and Jesse Morris has for me cracked the code with this Canadian national team and this lineup and it's a great spot for Liam Millar and he deserves the praise. Canadian supporters need to get out there and understand Liam Millar was sensational today and he's a reason we did so well. The covering, the tracking back, the discipline, it was incredible from Liam Millar and also being able to track back, be smart defensively, but also help out attacking wise and create big chances. He was sensational and this is why he's getting warranted with such a big transfer to whether it's a top championship club or whether it's a depth option at a Premier League club. Liam Millar deserved it and he massively put his name out there once again against the French national side. But there was other huge stars out there today as in Ismail Kone. Ismail Kone was sensational for so many different reasons. And you saw Ismail Kone move the ball around brilliantly. He had Kamavinga in his pocket. He was pulling out spin moves. Ismail Kone has put his name out there and massively stapled why he deserves a big transfer away from Watford. After this match, you could see Watford supporters showing that we should be starting him constantly every week. Why wasn't he starting all season? Ismail Kone was brilliant against a star-studded French midfield of Ingolo Kante, who fair play is aging and playing in Saudi Arabia, but is still a sensational midfielder. And then against Eduardo Camavinga, who is one of the best midfielders in world football playing for Real Madrid. Ismail Kone was sensational, making great slide tackles, stopping the ball, and distributing very well, Ismail Kone was all over the place. And this is why for so long, we had Canadian supporters saying, we don't have a double pivot. This midfield can't play in the double pivot. Ishtakio and Kone just aren't good enough. We have to play midfield three. And that was absolute a joke for me. I didn't think that was true because this Canadian midfield is very well suited for a double pivot in a Kone Ishtakio 2 if those midfielders can play inverted, if they can play tucked in, and if Ishtakio and Kona can be disciplined enough to hold those roles as a six. And under Jesse Marsh, you can truly see it here. And Kony was fantastic at it. And he deserves his props. He deserves his praise, which he is getting as the man of the match award for myself, but also did get it in the game as well. And it's fantastic for Kone because he was truly brilliant today, as well as another player who currently still plays in the MLS, in Maxime Crepeau. Maxime Crepeau is going to have French supporters, going to have supporters all around the world looking at his profile, saying, who is this Canadian goalkeeper and where is he playing? Because he deserves a transfer. Maxime Crepeau was sensational today, making two humongous saves in the first 10-15 minutes to absolutely keep Canada in it. And I'll be absolutely honest and hold up my hands and say I was wrong here. I said when the squad got announced that Dane St. Clair for me should be the starter. And yes, fair play, he did very well against the Dutch, but did make a couple of big mistakes with what the goals. And for me, I'll hold up my hands and say Maxime Crepeau now deserves a number one spot. He was sensational, made huge saves. He showed the calm. He was able to command his area very well and did a great job of distributing as well. And he held himself with a very good presence. And I did not think for one moment that I'm worried for Maxime Crepeau to face a shot, whether it's in the... 15th minute, whether it's in the 95th minute. He was incredible. And he has that ability, which I thought Dane St. Clair has, and which I think Maxime Crepeau has, 
but I thought Dane Sinclair had it more, but I was absolutely wrong. Dane, Maxime Kripal has that ability to make that huge stop to absolutely get your side going and swing the momentum and he did that early on in the first 15 minutes making those two huge saves which absolutely I think got this Canadian side woke up a bit saying okay we got to switch on Max Max has made two huge saves and we got to wake up and start to hold some of the ball we got to get the pressure going and he was incredible Maxine Crepo, Liam Millar and the likes of Ismail Kone were sensational, along with the back line, that center back pairing of Mozi Bombito and DC, who absolutely put their names out there as well. I'm not going to talk about them as much right now because I don't want to make this extremely long, but I will be having a five things we learned from this match coming out tomorrow or the day after because this was a sensational game from Canada and many of the players out there. Also, it was great to see Tani Olawasi get his first debut with the Canadian national team. I know some supporters are going to be, why didn't Theo Bear feature? Why didn't E.K. Ogbo feature? But this is now the thing about this Canadian national team. We have so many options up top. Whether it's Kyle Larin, whether it's Jonathan David, whether it's the likes of Jacob Schaffelberg who can play either either side on the wing slash 10 in a 4 triple 2 or up top as a 9 for Jesse Marsh's system. Then you also have Theo Barry, then you also have E.K. Ogbo, then you also have Tani Olawasi, and then even not even in the squad, you have Jason Russell Rowe. This team is filtered with top options up front. So yes, you can look at why wasn't such and such play, why wasn't Theo Bear, E.K. Ogbo. This team is filtered with options, and I'm not going to pick and, and choose what we're going to nick at, but... I'm really not going to focus on a couple of players not featuring when we just got a huge result, one of the biggest results in the Federation's history. That might be a stretch, but for me in my lifetime, it's one of the biggest results or the biggest result I've seen as a Canadian national team supporter. And it was a brilliant match. Great to see Tenny Olawasi get his debut. Fantastic from him. If there's one player I want to really point at to say he had an off game, he was only on the field for a little bit, was Kyle Hebert. He did come on. Did struggle a little bit against Kingsley Coleman, but that was always going to happen. He was a he didn't feature, of course, till later on. Kingsley Coleman is already warm. He's playing very well. Kyle Heaper comes on. He gets burned once or twice by Kingsley Coleman. That was always expected, but I'm not going to really take it any harshly against Kyle Heaper after we just pulled off an incredible result. I love Jesse Marsh's tactics in this game. Very narrow, but you also had the likes of Liam Millar and... Tejon Buchanan's as your right mid left mid but more so your inverted tens in that four triple two role and they would tuck in a bit more when attacking but then you would see Alfonso Davies and Alistair Johnson bomb want to give them those overlaps which is exactly how Alfonso Davies wants to play his football and when you saw Richie Larea came on he did his true Richie Larea type football winning one or two fouls getting up the pitch and I think this formation this setup this tactical setup under jesse marsh is going to suit this canadian side perfectly especially at fullback where alfonso davies is going to get the best out of him demanding those sprints those dribbles those overlaps but also at the right side you're gonna have the defensive stability of alistair johnson but he also is going to get that crossing out of him that you see at celtic where he can deliver those pinpoint passes into the box and overlaps which you see all the time in the sbfl for celtic which we will now be able to get that out of alistair johnson on the right side as well as his defensive stability and then when you bring on richie lorea he has the pace the dribbling exciting and also the ability to win you that foul in the final third which he did multiple times against the french national side today and it was incredible to see i think this system is going to suit this team perfectly we've seen it very well today people have complained the first match against the dutch jesse marsh out that is never in question and some people were questioning that jesse marsh no matter what team he's at always has defensive flaws but for me if you think jesse marsh's sides always has defensive flaws i would love to see it against canada and france because truly there was de there was defensive flaws but like i said we bended but we did not break that is always the um code for a good back line and a good uh, defense and a good building of a squad in my opinion and this back line is finally extremely exciting and has more pace than I've never ever seen in this national team's history and I absolutely love it but guys Canada finishes nil nil against the French national side in Bordeaux in an extremely impressive match with my three exciting players being Liam Millar Ismail Kone, Maxime Crepo, among many of the players who could have gotten huge shouts today. I will be doing a five things we learned tomorrow or the day after, breaking down five key points that I've taken from this match 
and it'll be very interesting to dive deeper into those. But guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments around this huge result from the Canadian national team. Make sure to drop a like, hit that sub button because it means so much to me on the channel, guys. We're at 335 subs, and let's keep on moving up. The faster to 400 subscribers, whoops, the better we are doing. And I really appreciate it, guys, because we're just trying to make the best Canadian national team fan channel possible. And it is very exciting, and I really appreciate it, guys. And I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.